We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? And welcome back to O'Reilly Radio 134, recorded Friday, December 2nd, 2016, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really? I'm your host, Andy Gowan, and I still have my usual suspects. I've got Fred Sims, Stephen Griffith, Daniel Atherton, and Amber Besecker. Welcome back, everybody. So, um, we uh, in the top half of the show, uh, we're just doing two uh, this week. Uh, top half, we, we discussed the direction of the show, some new stuff, and... Uh, and uh, you know, authoring. So that was that was great, Amber. Thank you very much. So if you didn't listen to that, go back and, and listen, folks. Uh, some good stuff, and, and we could also use your input. Um, and by input, I mean go ahead and send us an email, oreallyradiopodcast at gmail.com or 470-222-6759. Now, um, we can't possibly face December without talking about Donald Trump, obviously. It's just not, not a possibility. Um, oh. In, I'd well, like it to be a possibility. It's, it's been less than a month since he has become the president-elect, and he's not the president yet. No. Nope. But that's not stopping him from making weird deals, which I don't even know how he's making those deals. How is he making um, that deal? On a wing and a prayer. actually is primarily due to Pence still being governor. Of Indiana. Oh, is that? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, for those of you that might have missed it, um, Donald Trump, uh, president elect, made a little side deal with Carrier. Uh, Carrier was uh, under fire for sending jobs to Mexico, outsourcing those uh, jobs. 2,100, I believe. Yeah, 2,100 jobs, something like that. And he managed to. Save less than fifty percent of them. Yeah, yeah. Less than a thousand. thousand. Less than a thousand jobs. It was something like seven hundred or something at the end of the day. No, no, the, the the number that they keep giving out is about a thousand. Yeah, they're rounding up because uh, he likes yeah. round numbers. But it was mostly due to um, Pence, who's still governor, promising uh, tax incentives for them to stay. But that's. In Indiana, I don't know where those factories are closing. So it could be just the creation of a thousand jobs at the expense of twenty one hundred. I'm not entirely certain. At the cost of millions in subsidies, in tax breaks, mm-hmm. seven million over ten years, I believe, to save less than a thousand jobs, we could pay those people directly with that money. And they would come out ahead, and so would we. Um, yeah, that's the thing. It's a giant yeah. cost to taxpayers. You know how you keep jobs from leaving? Um, hit the companies in the pocketbook. Which is what he said that he was going to do. Instead... The man... It's, how do you believe a habitual liar? Yeah. When his own lawyers don't trust him, so they have to meet with him with at least two people in the room. That's... Bad. Um, so that was Carrier, and just to just to give you a comparison, you know, uh, just this month, you know, the the month of November, since that's that's the month that we've just closed out. Uh, the Obama administration is claiming 174,000 jobs have been created in the month of November. An unemployment rate of less than 4.5 percent. Yeah. The lowest it's been in decades. Yeah. That is how you actually, you know, do the job thing. A $10 million subsidy over over seven years for less than a thousand jobs? That is not sustainable. And I can't believe that this is something that, you know, I have to I have to go with. But Sarah Palin said something that I agree with today. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm getting that lower bowel discomfort again. Yeah. Um, now this was this was about the carrier deal. Uh, Palin slams Trump carrier deal as crony capitalism. Yes. Uh, she's criticizing President-elect Donald Trump's deal with carrier, even as she reportedly uh, is under consideration to service Trump's Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Uh, she did an op-ed 
in uh, Young Conservatives, published Friday, so this is all today. Um, what a relief for hundreds of workers, she wrote, Merry Christmas, Indiana. But then she goes on to blast the deal as crony capitalism when government steps in arbitrarily with this, – this is quoting her, okay? When government steps in arbitrarily with individual subsidies favoring one business over others, it sets inconsistent, unfair, illogical precedent. Then special interests creep in and manipulate markets. Republicans oppose this. Remember? That was from Sarah Palin. That was a moment of clarity. I yeah. fleeting clarity. Yeah. Uh yeah, so so that happened. I, 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 we're in bizarro world here, okay? That, that happened. Um, and then Trump has been making some phone calls. Yeah. To other world leaders. So the first one was to Pakistan, where apparently he doesn't understand the nuances of communication with national leaders in the Middle East. Isn't he doing this on unsecured lines? He's doing it on like his own his own cell phone. I have Sweet. no clue. Oh, as we all know, he has the best security. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. It's Mid-late. an Apple. They're secure, right? You know, I don't know. Actually, I mean, we the government can't make you give him the numbers. He's, um, yeah, he's, he's rogue. He's a rogue president. Of course, he's not. And not in the good way. He's not president yet. That inauguration has not happened yet. He's a maverick. The, the electoral college hasn't voted yet. Yeah. He might not even get it at this point. And he, he's he's not necessarily so much rogue as he is. He's playing that uh, conflict of interest thing to a T. And, you know, I'm not sure whether or not it'll get brought up. But, I mean, if we're going to discuss the phone calls, we might as well. We'll talk Let's about the it. one to Taiwan. Yeah, um, that's next. Yeah. In, in which he he did make that call, which is going back on decades. And I'm talking, what was it, Ford? Or was it Carter? Um, uh, well, like, the Taiwan thing was 1979. Right. Is when we stopped. Um, okay. Because we the, recognize Beijing as the capital. and It was the one China policy. Right. Okay. So... But that's, yeah, just that's to just to bring it back, it's like this is a no. this is a nuanced issue going back decades. So we kind of need to need to lay the groundwork for well, why this was a giant bad thing. The, the Pakistan thing is actually cataclysmically bad. Not, I, I I have to bring it back to this. Okay, Pakistan and India hate each other. Yes, capital H. They both have nuclear capabilities. And they threatened to use them on each other. Yes, repeatedly. And we have a sort of been keeping a tenuative peace diplomatically between these two nations by not favoring either one of them too much. We have turned a blind eye on a number of occasions to Pakistan's human rights record. Mm -hmm. So we can perform operations within their borders. Also, to keep them from blowing up their neighbors. Yeah. Time magazine had a a good piece uh, on the Pakistan thing. Uh, Oh, by the way, uh, the... Where was it? Uh, Yeah, their their ministry uh, actually released... Yeah, Pakistani government... Uh, yeah. Release the entire transcript of the conversation between President-elect Trump uh, and Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Um, it's it's a bit disturbing, and it is unmistakably uh, Trump language being used. Um, there are a few foreign policy topics. There are few foreign policy topics quite as complicated as the relationship between India and Pakistan, South Asia's nuclear-armed nemesis. Nemesis. Uh, Any world leader approaching the issue, even obliquely, must surely see the handle-with-care label from miles away, given the possible 
possibility of nuclear conflict. U.S. President-elect Donald Trump, however, doesn't seem to have read the memo injecting a pronounced element of uncertainty about the position of the world's only remaining superpower on the most complex of subjects in a call with Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Trump's intervention could have serious consequences for both regional and global stability. Um, he said, uh, let's see, where was it? Uh, President Trump said, Prime Minister, uh, you know, yes, Sharif, you have a very good reputation. You're a terrific guy. You are doing amazing work, which is visible in every way. I'm looking forward to see you soon. Your country is amazing with tremendous opportunities. Pakistanis are one of the most intelligent people. I am ready and willing to play any role you want me to play to address and find solutions to the outstanding problems. That would be turn a blind eye and let them nuke India. So Pakistanis are some of the smartest people in the world as long as they're not living in America? That is what he said, yes. <sighs> Got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of particular interest, the readout added, on being invited to visit Pakistan by the Prime Minister, Mr. Trump said that he would love to come to a fantastic country, fantastic place of fantastic people. Please convey to the Pakistani people that they are amazing, and all Pakistanis I have known are exceptional people, said Mr. Donald Trump. Um, now that's, this is not fake news. No. I, I mean, you know, we've had, we've had a rash of this, you know, where it's like, it's all, you know, made up and obviously that's wrong and things like that. This is not fake news. This is something that's being reported by heads of state, you know, national press corps. It's not a joke. This is all bad. When the American president goes to visit a nation, it's incredibly important. Yes. It is also seen as condoning the actions of said government. Yeah. Yeah. Pakistan has a history of horrific human rights abuses. They are warmongering. Mm -hmm. They are... Well, I... They have a history... They have a history... Of yeah, I, I don't want the, I don't want to label them as warmongering. Um, the, the, their self defense minister, well, their defense minister, pretty much is going. Please, by all means, give us a reason to nuke India. Of note, President Obama is the first American president ever to visit India twice during his term. Mm -hmm. However, he has never set foot in Pakistan. Yeah. So we because Obama yeah. actually takes his international briefings. Yeah. Daily, he reads the black book. He knows what's going on in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I I definitely want to know what I am ready and willing to play any role that you want me to play to address and find solutions to the outstanding problems. What does that mean? In it Trump, means in they Trump have parlance, something that he wants, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to get it. No, I, I think no. that's just his opening gambit to anybody. Yeah. I want you to like me. Yeah. But that's not I'll promise how you the you, world and then screw you later. But that's not how you play diplomacy. No, I don't. I that's don't how you play business, but that's not how you play diplomacy. Those and, are two different games. And this is kind of where I was going before. Um, I think Amber is spot on here, and I think in this case, you guys might be looking at someone doing a political thing who's not a politician. So there's no political motive here. And when you look at something like his call to Taiwan, when he's already had people as recently as October – in Taiwan, mm -hmm. looking at plots of lands to open a resort in Taiwan, and now he's calling that leader, you know, specifically going against decades of yeah. essentially keeping them on the back burner because we do follow the one China policy and we use China politically for things like keeping North Korea in check. Yeah. Which if we piss off China and then lose that, that's just another piece in the World War Three puzzle. Oh, by the way, how about the phone call he made to Rodrigo Duarte where he invited him to the goddamn White House? These are not politically motivated moves. These are business moves. Mm -hmm. 
we can't keep looking at him like he's a politician he's and not. then and then saying, oh, well, this isn't how you do this in the political field. No shit. We know that's not how you do it in the political field. We've got decades of things to look back on and see. That's not how you do it. He has no idea how to do it. And so all he's doing is continuing to run his life with this conflict of interest because he is still in charge of all his business shit. Yeah. All of it. And that's the decisions he's making. What will benefit me? Because, surprise, anybody who is listening to this show who was not aware and voted for Trump and you still think that this has anything to do with you as a person, you're a fucking retard. This has nothing to do with anybody but him. Nothing to do with anybody but him. Congratulations on peaking the audio output. Good job. (laughs) <laughs> As I, there, is, um, there is not a topic on the planet right now that inspires more ire in me than the existence of this human being and the role that he now plays in our country because he is no longer a joke no no it's definitely not a laughing matter I mean okay so uh, he said that he's going to end NASA's climate research because it's too politicized. That's nice. His daughter says that she's going to take climate as her pet project. Her, his daughter can't spell climate. <laughs> Whatever that means. Um, Wasn't she going to do something with maternity leave, too, or family leave, or whatever? Oh, okay. She's that, supposed that, to be running weird. the corporations that he's supposed to be pulling out of. Nah, that'll be uh, the I... sons, I'm sure. You know, the, the um, Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, it'll be them. I sure wish she'd done a little more pulling out. Oh, wow. Oh, Amber, Amber, nice. Amber. Good job. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so let's see. What else? What else? Um, oh, th- there was a story out in The Independent saying that World War Three has actually already arrived. Like, I guess we just don't I'll, know it I'll, yet. I'll pass. Yeah, we'll, we'll just pass <laughs> on that one. Um, uh, uh Again, the Taiwan thing is is I I, I hate to har- harp on it, but no, no, you're not harping on it's... it. Let's go, let's go to Taiwan. Let's... It's fucking terrifying. Yeah, okay. Because I've got I've got policy... other stories to add, but this is in the same vein. So keep go go go. Uh, okay, one of the few good things that Richard Nixon ever did as president was open up her, our relations with China. He's the one that laid the groundwork. Yeah. And part of that has been the one China policy, which is when dealing with all of that area, including areas of dispute like Taiwan, like Tibet, Mm -hmm. we don't mention them. We go out of our way to not upset Beijing. So that we have some diplomatic footing and cachet with them. Especially considering that ahead of our election, China has sacked their finance minister, was a progressive. And, right. Well, but that was because of the tampered- currency manipulation thing, right? Yeah, but it was still because of Trump. Because, yeah. China had the forethought of, oh crud, this this clown's going to win, um, and so they 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 sacked their finance minister, um, pretty much accused him of being too in love with the West, <laughs> um, and that is that prime minister consolidating power, the person that we're going to have to negotiate with diplomatically it's his government well that's also a a policy change you know in the form of scapegoating someone else from from what i've been reading those people who analyze china Mm -hmm. when it comes to the that the, the sacking of the finance minister was it it was very much a consolidation of power because hmm. that guy was got there because the people and the brains in the community liked him he was liked his policies were progressive they they put 
it made it so that the government had less control of their economic future. It was more in the hands of the market. Um, uh, well, and I'm sure that uh, when the, with the uh, the steep declines of the Chinese stock market over the last year, you know, when the bottom dropped out and and billions went missing from people's wallets, I'm sure that that probably didn't uh, didn't do very well for him either. No, that actually happened after he got in. Yeah. Um, so that was this, his this, fault. What basically? That's that's but, how it would be perceived. But again, it was part of the stuff from the previous finance minister policies he was putting in place was help digging them out. Yeah, um, but it's it's the blame game. You know, if it happened on your watch, then you're responsible for it, even if it happened eh, because anyway. of previous policies. So you know. Beijing's already freaking upset. I already mm-hmm. saw what was it, an hour, hour and a half ago, that Beijing has already called the White House. Yeah, they called after the call was made to Taiwan. After it was reported, no, no. they called. Yeah, after they got confirmation that the call was made. Because mm-hmm. we this Taiwan call happened yesterday. It didn't happen today. Right. Um, the, the call to the White House has happened today, just recently. Um, no, Beijing is furious. Yeah, coming and, out actually from Reuters three hours ago, uh, White House has explicitly said there is no change to the one China policy and quoting the national security spokesman for President Barack Obama, we remain firmly committed to our one China policy. Our fundamental interest is in peaceful and stable cross-strait relations. And if yeah. we're going to go back and look at a little context when we're looking at, at the context of things and, and kind of explaining things, uh, another reason why Beijing would be as furious as they are regarding this situation is people may not remember, but the last Republican president that we had in office, the only reason why they didn't take a hardline approach against Beijing and start to actually try and confront how things were being handled there is because 9-11 happened. There were uh, advisors to Bush that were essentially pushing um, an approach to being more confrontational towards Beijing and not having that, um, you know, essentially the the diplomacy and um, economic partnership that we do maintain with them now. So when you see another Republican come in and you know that the last time we had a Republican, the only thing that stopped that was essentially an attack on our our lands. And now you have the the current Republican president elect calling who would be, you know, one of your larger rivals and, and on the political stage. What are you to think in that regard? Oh, boy. Um, man, we're in a weird, weird world at this point. Um, yeah. Yeah, there is no policy to our longstanding policy on cross-strait issues, National Security Spokeswoman Emily Horn told AFP. Um, we remain firmly committed to our One China policy based on the three joint communiques and the Taiwan Relations Act. Our fundamental interest is in the peaceful and stable cross-strait relations. Yep. So, I guess I, I just have to ask, what can be done with such a loose cannon? Well, you get we are having a, a number of electors who are, who are giving up and quitting, or declared they aren't voting. I mean, th- this is just, it's so reckless. That, again, the best thing that can happen in my opinion, that we actually have a shot at is that somebody with actual foreign policy experience Mm -hmm. is appointed Secretary of State who is can just play apologist for Trump and try and smooth things over. That's the best case scenario. Huh. Four hours ago, uh, Donald Trump tweeted, the president of Taiwan called me in big, bold letters 
today to wish me congratulations on winning the presidency. Thank you. you. Don't take the call. He took the call. <clears throat> you you have somebody else say thank you. He's busy, and you don't take the call. Okay. Three hours ago, he also tweeted. Interesting how the U.S. sells Taiwan billions of dollars of military equipment, but I should not accept a congratulatory call. It's diplomacy, <laughs> you idiot. Again, there is not a care that extends outside of the dust ruffle wig that covers that empty fucking dome that sits above his double chins. If it does not concern or affect him, he doesn't care. He doesn't care about diplomacy that affects this nation. He doesn't care about diplomacy that affects the world stage. He he doesn't even see that the inevitable war that he is going to cause before he's even fucking elected is going to damage all of these hotels that he actually cares about. I guess it'll just be all flat ground. You can make a hell of a golf course that way, President Trump. I I haven't I haven't looked in the spin rooms of of how how the uh, how the right is going to try and make this a positive. Yeah, I haven't looked yet. Well, Breitbart is saying that the Secretary of State is going to be Exxon CEO Rex Tillerson. I Whoa. I doubt that. I I I, I, I am hoping. I am hoping against that in a myriad of ways. <laughs> my my brain um, my brain is hurting. Again. I'm sorry, I just thought uh, that, that they put forth David Petraeus initially, and that was hilarious to me because of what he would have been required to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Petraeus yeah. uh you know, since he pled guilty to mishandling classified material by giving it to his uh, mistress. Uh, yeah, let's be slightly out there. It was Allege the idea that Hillary may have done these things or may have done it accidentally, everything else. Right. No. Petraeus literally handed classified information, including passwords to his computer, which contained even more, to his mistress. This is not an idea. Yeah. This is not a thought. This is not a maybe he did. No. Confirmed he did and he admitted to doing it. What he did yeah. was thousands of times worse than what Hillary was alleged to have done. Former general, former CIA chief. Yeah. Should I mean, have known fucking better. Did know better. He just didn't care. Yeah. No. Yes. He, thought, is, he thought he was above it. Which is why he would have fit in perfectly with the mm-hmm. currently assembled cabinet. Right. But no, he, I thought uh, for sure he was going to do it. Yeah, he, uh, he would have had to mention mention every country that he was going to to his parole officer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he would have had to talk to his parole officer in order to do. I mean, that's just amazing. That sound hilarious. Job. Yeah, that's just um, amazing. which would have been awesome because a, as a parole officer, you get to approve or deny. Hey, I got to roll over to uh, Pakistan real quick and smooth over a possible dust up with India. Is that cool? Yeah, no, you're not. You're not going. <laughs> no, no, that, yeah. no. Absolutely, be back by ten o'clock p.m. Yeah, like, exactly. What? It's like you got curfew, but first you're gonna pee in this cup. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> But best bet oh, is somebody, hurts. anybody with actual foreign policy chops and diplomatic skill gets the Secretary of State job. Well, and apparently, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say, I mean, that, yeah, that's the best bet. But at the same time, it is not going to happen. And the reason why I say that is only because... No one wants to be associated with this fucking train wreck. Uh, again, I think there are a few, lack of a better word, patriots out there that are willing to, okay, my job is to make it so there's still a nation left after this this clown gets voted out of office. My job is to just pretty much apologize for every single stupid thing he said. And go, hi, I'm here to let you know that you'll be able to actually negotiate with America in four years. That's my job. Apparently, other candidates uh, that are in the running are or or were Rudy Giuliani, Mitt Romney, and a U.N. ambassador. 
Well, Mitt I, Romney looked like uh, he was, you know. We've seen the memes. Yeah. My name is Reek. Yeah. Um, he was he was being, <laughs> you know, raked over the coals. He so. had that Ted Cruz face going on he did. when Ted Cruz had to run the phone banks. Yes, he did. <laughs> the, oh, yeah. This prisoner of war. The two faces <laughs> in that and picture. We all know those are losers. Well, yeah, the, the two faces in that picture were the face of the devil and the face of someone who had defiantly told the devil, I will never sign with you. And then later was like, about this cancer I've got, could you help me out? Yeah. <laughs> Where's the pen? Um, yeah, the picture of people's look on people's faces when they realize they have sold their soul. And yeah, Mitt Romney, Ted Cruz. Yeah, Chris Christie. Was Chris the other Christie, one. just like oh, oh. I think you, I saw. I think, I think I saw one which was like, uh, you, "You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight?" I think that was one of them. You know, yeah. no. what was what was but, going on with Christie? Um, he's thrown his hat in as RNC chair. Now, huh. yeah, now that previous how's he got to do it from jail? <laughs> yeah, I say, is is there any bridge work involved? Yeah. Oh. Oh man. yeah, bridges to the tea party. Um, so oh, bridges nowhere. Gotcha. Okay, so just um, since we didn't have a show last week, um, because <laughs> reasons, uh, I've got a little backlog. I'm just going to read the headlines. Just okay. this is stuff that I just saved, you know, from various sites. Um, amid shouts of shame, Geo- a House GOP defeats gay rights measure. Uh, mm-hmm. Trump holds ownership share in Dakota Access Pipeline Builder. Uh, the U.S. media is completely unprepared to cover a Trump presidency. That was out in the Atlantic. That's interesting, at yep. least. Uh, Betsy DeVos picked as president-elect Donald Trump's education secretary. Education will be set back 20 years. Yep. Uh, chemist Annie Duquesne uh, only gets three years in prison for manipulating 40,000 black people's drug tests. Fantastic. Um, Republican elector chooses to resign rather than vote for Trump. Uh, yep. We're seeing more and more of that. Uh, huge cracks in the West Antarctic ice sheet may signal its collapse. Um, I hope so at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan Roof to represent himself at trial in Charleston church shootings. That way Excellent. he'd be a mistrial. Yeah. That's pretty much A man who there. represents himself in court has an idiot for a client. No, 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 no. He, if, if he goes in and they will make him acknowledge the fact that he is representing himself and waiving the right to counsel and then he cannot get a mistrial. There, there that are fail safes. There are fail safes in place that will keep it from him being able to, to obtain the mistrial if he is doing this of his own volition. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. We can still figure out a way to screw it up. Andy, oh, I, I have I a know we can. If you don't get to it. Well, hang on. Let me uh, let me run through the rest here. Um, so yeah, uh, Trump uh, to end NASA's climate change research to politicize. Petraeus pleads guilty to mishandling classified material. Will face probation. McConnell says he won't recuse himself from wife's cabinet uh, confirmation. Says, uh, it just blatantly says, "Let me be clear. I will not be recusing myself." Uh, scientists confirmed the largest die-off of corals ever recorded on Australia's Great Barrier Reef. An oil spill of 90,000 gallons in the Gulf of Mexico in May, but nobody's really talking about it very much. Uh, there was a, a long uh, list of 21 tweets that were very interesting about why do rural poor Americans vote against their economic interests. Um, that was that was very interesting, so I recommend uh, following that one. I'll, I'll put a link out somewhere. Uh, let's see which one Ivanka Trump wants to speak out on climate change. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, the bizarre Pakistan and, and all that. Um, and let's see, last good one. Good one here. Uh, Obama on marijuana should be treated like cigarettes or alcohol. Mm-hmm. So those are some last minute That's things. That's what you can um, do when you're a lame duck president and say stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can th- say stuff like thanks that. Thanks for saying that now and doing absolutely nothing about it. Yep, mm-hmm. lame duck president. Yeah. Oh, oh. This is this is interesting. Let me pull up the headline here, uh, and also mute the tab just in case something happens up. Um, okay. Uh, since the beginning of 2016, ABC's World News Tonight, CBS Evening News, and NBC Nightly News have devoted just how many minutes to issues to actual issues coverage. 
Um, since the beginning of 2016? I'm guessing two yeah. hours? Since the beginning. And we're talking mm-hmm. total combined between all three shows? Yes. 45 minutes. I'm going to say two hours. I hope I'm not over. Okay. Since the beginning of 2016? Since the yeah. beginning of 2016. ABC's World News Tonight, CBS mm-hmm. Evening News, and NBC mm-hmm. Nightly News. How many combined total hours? Combined minutes. Minutes. Oh, minutes. Ooh. Minutes. I'm going to say 120. <laughs> um... I'm going to say 60. Okay. Steven? I'm, I'm actually going to low ball here. I'm going to say 30. Okay. And, and Fred, yours was? Uh, I said 45. 45. Yeah. Closest to the pin, it was 32 minutes. Steven wins. Oh, holy yes. cow. 32 minutes. ABC yes, did bad. eight minutes, all of which was terrorism. NBC, eight minutes of terrorism, LBT, LG. B to L B G T, whichever combination of those letters you'd like, issues and foreign policy. CBS, mm, they they did well. Sixteen minutes for foreign policy, terrorism, immigration, uh, policing, and the Environmental Protection Agency. Yeah, that's oh, all. No. That's all. By the way, no trade, no healthcare, no climate change, no drugs, no poverty, no guns, no infrastructure, no deficits. Yeah. So that's Excellent. since the beginning of 2016. This entire year, well, no NBC, real issues were discussed because all that gets handled by MSNBC, their cable mm-hmm. version. But the other two, I'm going, guys, <laughs> what's wrong? Mm-hmm. Here's what's wrong: shareholders. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, let's see. So, so this was, um, an analysis by Andrew Tyndall. Um, and continuing with that, uh, th- these numbers are staggering in terms of the complete retreat, uh, they represent from issues oriented, uh, campaign coverage. Just eight years ago, the last time both parties nominated new candidates for the White House, the network newscast devoted 220 minutes to issues coverage compared to only 32 minutes so far this year. CBS Evening News went from 119 minutes of issues coverage in 2008 to only 16 this year. Uh, note that during the Republican primary season alone, the network spent 333 minutes focusing on Donald Trump. Yet for all of 2016, they have set aside just one-tenth of that for issues reporting. Um, and look at this. Combined, the three networks newscast have slotted 100 minutes so far this year for reporting on Hillary Clinton's emails while she served as Secretary of State, but just 32 minutes for all issues coverage, period. NBC's Nightly News spent 31 minutes on emails this year, but just eight minutes on issues. Yeah. So that's, I, I, I have to put a lot of the blame for where we are right now as a country on our media and not the focusing state on, is dead. not focusing at all on what's actually going on. You know, every time that Bernie was on, you know what, those eight minutes <laughs> are probably when Bernie was on saying we need to talk about issues and not the damn emails. That, not not even. <laughs> not it, even, it, yeah. Probably 30, 30 seconds was dedicated to Bernie out of those yeah. 32 minutes. Yeah. So that's, that's the state of... Uh, and those are the major networks. Those are the networks that are not cable networks. Those are the ones that get broadcast over the air that are free. All you have those to do is tune in. That, those are the ones that the majority of Americans actually watch. Yeah, that's where the Nielsen ratings uh, are. So, isn't that fun? So, <clears throat> Amber, you had a headline that you that I you do, had. and it's one that I haven't heard a lot about, which okay. is sickening and uh, horrifying. Do you guys remember Walter Scott? Name Walter, Walter Scott rings a bell. He was the unarmed black man who was shot in the back on camera by Officer Michael Slager. Okay. Yeah, that guy's going to get off. Yep, a lone juror said Friday he cannot convict a white former police officer who fatally shot a black man in South Carolina 
And the jury said they want to continue deliberating, but a mistrial is expected on Monday when they return. The juror in a letter to the court said, I cannot in good conscience consider a guilty verdict against Michael Slager, a former patrolman who was who pulled over Walter Scott in North Charleston and ended up shooting him as a bystander recorded the incident on video. The jury foreperson said in a separate note to the court that it was only one juror who was, quote unquote, having issues. The juror opposed the conviction and said in the letter, I cannot and will not change my mind. This was the one that he not only shot him in the back, but then planted a weapon yeah, on the, camera. The, mm. I, I've seen the video from my from rewatching right now. No, it's the again. Walter Scott is not running away. He is rather calmly walking away from the officer at distance of well, he's jogging away. Let's be honest here. But of course, the cop pulls a gun on him, and. Again, no actual threat, no hardcore you consider, you know, thug running. You know, just trying to get away, and the cop just unloads on him. Okay, now, the, to be fair, uh, I want to make sure that the entire story is out there, and, and yeah. this is in no way, shape, or form going against, you know, your opinions or anything like this. But to be fair, they had scuffled beforehand. The cop tried to pull a taser, and Walter Scott grabbed for it before he went to run away. So that needs... To be said, it doesn't change anything that happened, but yeah. the only part that was recorded was after that part. There is a, there's yeah. actual dash cam footage of the scuffle beforehand. It doesn't change anything that happened. It doesn't change his response. It doesn't change that you don't unload multiple bullets at someone running away from you because you say you still fear for your life. None of that changes, but there is more to it than he just ran from him trying to stop him. And he shot him in the back. There there was somewhat of a scuffle, and the initial response was to tase him. I don't know why that didn't stay the, the response, if that's the, the, the fear that he felt at the time. But, you know, there was something that led up to whatever flipped in his mind that felt he needed to shoot this man in the back multiple times. Also, um, just real quick, the makeup of that jury is um, 11 white people. And one black individual, I believe it's um, like six men, five women um, on the jury. Well, let me at least about that be impressed. The fact that of the 11 white people, 10 of them are going, no, the guy's guilty. That actually is having listened to a lot of especially judicial podcasts lately and Mm -hmm. makeup and demographic things like that. That's actually rather nice to hear that. Hi, overwhelming evidence can sway a jury some of the time, even if they are not a true jury of your, you know. Well, technically yeah. speaking, they are a jury of the peer since this guy is white. Um, but it's nice to hear that there's a group of people out there who are not immediately swayed by the fact of, oh, look, it's a cop, I'm not going to go guilty. Right, and and the issue with the, the scuffle beforehand, um, you know, it, it's like you like you alluded to it's not real clear why that even occurred um regardless just like you said fred you don't follow that up with shooting a guy in the back multiple times and then putting a weapon down on the ground next to his body and going oh yeah he had a he had a weapon um and on top of that you know the the thing to bring up there would be the overwhelming amount of cases in which a white person has assaulted a police officer police officer shot at a police officer um r- tried to hit them with a car and they still managed to take them in without killing them oh yeah i mean uh, I, i'm in all, i'm in no all, way all making that comparison homicides, most of them are committed by whites mm-hmm. yeah i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not making that comparison at all i'm strictly oh, no, no, keeping it to this particular thing is if we're going to report on it i just want to make sure that we report everything and that's what i'm like i that information does not change the end result or how terrible the end result is. But if we're talking about it, I want to make sure that we do say everything because it's important to the context. It takes him from being uh, a vile, disgusting, scumbag, piece of shit, scum of the earth. And then you could just take like one of those pieces out and he's all of those things instead. You know, like it, it, it's just important to the story that everything is in there. Well, this is, this is certainly interesting. So, okay. The, the, the jury four person said, you know, in that's in a separate letter 
that it was only the one juror that was having issues. Now, this was all reported by Circuit Judge Clifton Newman. He's the one that's presiding. Uh, the juror opposed the conviction in a letter saying, I cannot and will not change my mind. Uh, but the jury said that it wanted to continue deliberating and requested to return at 9 a.m. Monday. The jury said it would right. have questions at that time. Uh, Slager was charged with, with murder. Although the jury was allowed to consider a lesser charge of manslaughter in addition to murder, um, yeah, so. and then that juror said that he wouldn't even consider manslaughter. Well, and that's the thing is that, like, yeah, they're going to come back Monday, but it's anticipated that there will be a mistrial because the juror yeah. is saying there's nothing that's going to change his mind. Yeah, the jury at that time sent a message to Newman asking to see the, see a transcript of the testimony from the man who took cell phone video of Slager shooting Scott. Newman, uh, Newman offered to let jurors listen to audio of the testimony, but they declined, saying they didn't believe it would change anything and said they couldn't reach a verdict. Uh, quoting the judge, if you do not reach a verdict, I must declare a mistrial. The same participants will come and the same lawyers will likely be likely ask basically the same questions and get basically the same answers and we will go through this whole process again. Yep. Oh, wow. That's fun. So, I guess we'll hear about that next week. Um, yeah, murder carries a penalty of 30 years to life. Manslaughter is punishable by 2 to 30 years behind bars. But, yeah, not going to do it, so. And currently, he, uh, Slager testified for the first time on trial Tuesday and told the court that uh, life has been a nightmare since the fatal shooting. He is currently free on bond. Yeah, life. <laughs> life has been a nightmare. Mm-hmm. While well, yeah. he's free on bond. Yes. Um, you, what what was the wording free. that the juror used again um, that okay. they said? Uh-huh. I cannot in good conscience consider a guilty verdict against Michael Slager, a former former troll officer. Well, I cannot in good conscience consider a guilty verdict. I he would, can't even consider it. Well, that's what I'm saying. I would need to look into the rules regarding jury selection in South Carolina and see why the judge couldn't just recuse him. If you're not even going to consider the verdict, you're not doing your job as as someone on the jury. That's your job to consider this. And if you're telling me that you can't even consider it, then you don't have a place on this jury. That's why we have backup jurors. So you get recused and someone else comes in. One of the alternates comes in. They sit down. They discuss it. People that will actually consider all of the possibilities of what will happen if it's either guilty, innocent, you know, whatever. So I, I would really need to look into that. The other thing that throws me is there are certain states, and I know every state is different, but in the case of, you know, hung jury in this situation, that the judge just ends up the making ju- the deliberation. The so, judge could, yeah. So why in this case would the judge not, you know, when when you... It's too high profile for him to put his self, self in, in risk that way, you the, know. If you want to cut funding to something that's too politicized, please cut funding to judges that think that making a decision that's going to actually help the community is is too political to make a, a decision. Activist judges. Activist judges, Fred. <laughs> Anywho. Um, but yeah, in, in that letter, so it was the, um, yeah, I cannot in good conscience consider a guilty verdict. I cannot and will not change my mind. Those were the words yeah, directly I'm, quoted. I'm sorry, you no longer get to be on this jury because it is your job to consider well, I, you see, devil's advocate here. He reached a conclusion based on the evidence. He's done. Mm-hmm. But that's not what he's saying. Well, that's, that's what I'm reading. Because this is at the end. This is during deliberations. He has reached his conclusion. If what the he others wrote... have reached a different conclusion. But if, what, if he's what not he... saying, like... Given the evidence, right, and I that's don't what I was going to say. Guilty verdict is appropriate. He's saying I will not consider yeah. a guilty verdict, which means he's not even giving it any thought. Which means he's just right. going in there saying I'm not going to convict a cop. Which and means he that. went in yeah. with a bias anyway. He, he shouldn't have been on the jury. jury selection process. Yeah, how, but did, how initial, did he make it through the void here with that? But the, with but the, but the initial jury, yeah. no, it, yeah. it's I can't even consider it to be a lie because the initial jury selection process is so flawed in the first place there are only so many challenges that you can offer 
to the jurors being selected, it doesn't really take much to slip through those potential cracks and have someone like this make it onto the jury. It happens all the time. Well, it also it the the attorneys both uh, for and against they wheel and deal with each other during the voir dire. Oh yeah, absolutely. So it very well may be that one of them wanted him, and in order to do that, they got a, got a couple other people instead. You know, they, they they horse traded to get the jury the way they wanted. But yeah, boy, I mean, what a th- trade! Yeah, there are several things to look at, but I, I think the first would be. You know, and obviously, if you're looking at it in that light, Andy, then there is something to look at in, in what he's saying. If that's the case and he amends his statement, then I, I guess I don't have an argument, but I would look at it like that. If I'm the judge, yeah. which I'm not, I'm just some guy sitting in front of a mic right now, then my thought is, yeah, why are you on my jury? You yeah, know, we're, we're legal uh, armchair quarterbacks, uh, you know, yeah. as it were. So don't take legal advice from a podcast. Um, <laughs> but in in this in particular, you're right, uh, Amber. That it is the word choice. It is definitely the word choice. And and if we've learned anything from uh, from law, is that the word choice matters a great deal. Which is why they obfuscate with so many different words and mm-hmm. from so many different ancient dialects that only they them can. ten dollar words. Yeah. Also, in South Carolina, a, each party has a maximum of six preemptory challenges they can use for those people out there who do not know it what a peremptory challenge is is when a lawyer during a case and they're doing jury selection just goes no i don't like you i don't want you on the case i don't want you on the jury with no cause whatsoever they just go no not you other ones after they get past whatever because each state has its own a number of peremptory challenges each group gets i've seen as low as three i've seen as many as 20 Mm -hmm. yeah when it's just you know past the peremptory challenges then they go okay i don't want you on the thing because well you're an expectant mother and you might give birth during the middle of the trial. Okay, that's – but before that, when it's preemptory, it's just, yeah. no, I just don't want you done. Yeah, oh, and, those, a bit of kind of knowledge. and those challenges actually work both ways. So what they'll do is they'll have like, let's say, 40 jurors up there for selection and they'll go through and the prosecution will say, uh, we don't like 1, 8, 9, 12, 15. And then the defense will say, no, 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 we like 15. Mm-hmm. And so that they can use the challenge either way. They can use it to save someone that the prosecution is trying to eliminate or they can use it to cut someone that they don't like. Right. Yeah, it goes kind of like that. Well, um, there's there was a couple good things that we can uh, we can leave on. Uh, one is uh, scientists have successfully engineered functioning human nerves. Ooh, that's kind of a big thing. Uh, Nick, because I'm going to use my last one during this presidency, <laughs> so I'm going to need new ones. <laughs> You're not wrong. Um, I, I, I could I could use some new ones. Yeah, that'd, that'd be yeah, that'd be something. And also, um, Alzheimer's protein plaques. Uh, this this isn't necessarily good news, but it is another indicator. Uh, those protein plaques that may cause Alzheimer's uh, may also harm the heart. Hmm. So, in in that, you may find that somebody that has heart problems may also develop Alzheimer's earlier because they may be you know, related. So again, this is just another exploration of what makes us tick and uh, anything that gets us closer to, you know, the real sources and reasons behind what Alzheimer's is and how we can get rid of it. um, I'm all in favor because if if there's anything that scares me is losing my mind that, that scares the Dickens out of me. So, um, Oh, and, uh, okay, last one, last one. Diamond batteries made of nuclear waste can generate power for thousands of years. Perf. Yeah, that, it certainly sounds like fun. Uh, so I'll have, uh, I'll, I'll throw all these links, all the ones that I've shouted down here. I'll put them all in the show notes so that you can, you can view them at your leisure and your discretion. And with that, I think, uh, I think we're down to picks. Do you have any, anything, panel? I mean, really, I I just wanted to, to um, yik yak as about, a, a, uh, about our preview stuff. to to 2017. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll put up there um, 
for those of you who enjoy Pathfinder, you probably already know it already, is D20 PFSRD. It is your online resource for everything Pathfinder. Um, they cite uh, a good portion of the rules, and you can look up there, find where almost every single source is cited for both your actual core books to even adventures and supplementary guides. So if it's a rule, it's probably there. Also, they have an excellent store for uh, third-party materials. So go and check out the D20 PFSRD. And SRD means System Reference Document. So this is the open source version for Pathfinder. Uh, Pathfinder was based on uh, Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 edition, and they extended it. Yeah. So this is the logical conclusion, basically, of it. And uh, we will be using, at least in in the the up-and-coming games... These are the rules that we'll be using because they're open source. So we will not be trampsing over any copyright violations. So this is what we'll, uh, what we'll work with, and we have all those links right at our disposal. It'll make things nice and easy, hopefully. So that's what we'll do. So thank you very much for that, Daniel. Anything else? No? Nothing this uh... week. You can go on Amazon.com and check out my books under Lana Hart. If you guys like Lovecraftian horror, if you like thrillers, if you like mystery, if you like time travel, if you like a little bit of romance, um, my series is called The Curious Collectible Series. And if you're in Kindle Unlimited, they are free until the beginning of January. Excellent. Excellent. Actually, I, I do if... have one thing. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, I didn't want to step over Yes, definitely support our fellow podcasters who are on here. Get her paid. Do um, it. However, uh, the, it's a Showtime series. It ended, but Penny Dreadful. If you're into awesomely shot, very good acted Victorian horror, watch Penny Dreadful. It's three seasons and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And it actually has a comic book that's picking up where the series left off. Ooh, mm-hmm. that I didn't know. I did hear that that was coming. I was wondering. It's like, yeah, didn't they? I thought they extended it. So. Yeah, they they do have um, a comic book that exists already, but the writers have already said that because they um, went ahead and ended the show, even though it was supposed to end after three seasons, um, they're going to go ahead and pick up in the comic book, kind of retool it and pick up where the show left off. So, okay. See, I think that whole "it was supposed to end this way" bullshit is bullshit, but we'll get into that another time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and definitely go out and uh, and get uh, get Amber's books, uh, the Curious Collectible series. It's three books in that series, right there. You know, and, you know, get the Kindle edition. Yeah, yeah, seven dollars mm-hmm. ninety eight cents. Money well spent. I own them. You do. You're so wonderful. <laughs> I do. I own them. Hey. I'm I'm working on reading them. I'm going to have to read more pages though, because I want you to get your half a cent. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. That half a cent means a lot to me. It means Although I don't know if it works for that because I just own them. I'm not in Kindle Unlimited, so. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I just got no, the yeah. money direct from sales, which is great, too, so thank you. It's potentially better, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. It really is. So Remember that, people. I'm potentially better. <laughs> you're better and than we went you're from better good than guy unlimited. Fred. <laughs> good guy you're Fred. You're the pajamas, is what you are. Good guy Fred buys books outright and doesn't go through Kindle Unlimited. Bad guy Fred <laughs> then makes fun of you because you use Kindle Unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> so that um, you know, for those of you that only listen to this episode and not and not the A side, uh, yeah, go back and listen to A, and you'll understand why we're uh, why we're mocking the Kindle Unlimited stuff and and why you shouldn't do it because it hurts authors. So yeah, TLDR version, it hurts authors. It hurts authors. So. Yeah, go back and fix that. There you go. Okay, and I think that's going to wrap it. So let's, where's the credits? Uh, Yeah, there we go. All righty. I know I have a 
show notes around here somewhere. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so that's it for tonight. We'll be back live next Friday about 9.30 p.m. Eastern. In the meantime, the conversation continue on the way. Head over to O'ReillyRadio.com. That's O-R-L-Y-R-A-D-I-O.com for all the links at the top of the page. So you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Tumblr, Google+, subscribe to the YouTube and Twitch channels, and, of course, watch us live and join in all the fun in the chat. Unfortunately, we didn't have any live viewers this week, but that's okay. Uh, if you've stayed with us all the way through the credits, how about you give us a hand? If you have a few spare dollars, uh, you can contribute to the Patreon to get early access to show releases and maybe some special perks, and let me know what you'd actually like about that. That, that would be very helpful, too. Just follow the Patreon link on the webpage or head over to patreon.com slash radio, and you can make a one-time donation via the donate button on the webpage, too. If you can't fit us into your rainy day funds, um, something that's probably even more more important is to share the show and leave us a review. We're always looking for new ideas for this show and the upcoming shows for 2017. So do share what's on your mind with us at Podcast at gmail.com. If you're the more talkative sort, we've got that voice line number at 470-222-6759. It's always ready for your call or your text if you don't like the sound of your own voice coming through your speakers. I can't thank you enough for spending some time with us. Until next time, this has been O'Reilly Radio, part of the... Oh, wait. There's a new company. There's a new company. The Random Axe Company, LLC. <laughs> Music for the show was created by Kevin McLeod of CompTech.com, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.